Hey, you may have heard that the perfect soil ratio for fermenting vegetables is between 2 and 2.5%. But what does it really mean and how do we calculate that? A little PSA here, if you don't care for the math, just skip to the second half of the video where I share my quick hacks. Now back to the percentage soil ratio, what it really means is the amount of salt to the entire mixture of everything combined in your final product of fermentation. For example, if you have 750 grams of vegetables and 1200 grams of water, and you add 50 grams of salt, then you will have a total weight of 2000 grams. 50 grams of salt divided by 2,000 grams of the entire mixture, that's a 2.5% salt ratio. Now knowing that salt ratio is a percentage by weight, we can approximate the amount of salt to use by weighing the water and vegetables combined on a digital scale and then multiply by the targeted ratio. This is not the exact calculation, but it's pretty close. In this case, 750 grams of vegetables plus 1,200 grams of water times 2.5%, you will get 48. 0.75 gram of salt. Close enough is perfectly fine when it comes to fermenting vegetables because there isn't a right number for the amount of salt to use. As long as the salt ratio fall within a safe range, we're good. And usually the right amount of salt is based on experience and what tastes the best to you anyways. It's all very overwhelming if you're new to fermenting vegetables or live in North America. So let me break it down further into the simplest measurements. So when I was writing my cookbook a few years ago, because North America Americans don't use the metric system, my publishers asked me to convert all of the grams in my recipes into pounds, cups, tablespoons, and teaspoons. And as you can expect, all of the fermentation recipes on my blog use this imperial system as well. Uh, and because we have already explained that the salt ratio doesn't need to be precise, it just needs to be safe and make your product taste good, uh, we can measure the salt fairly loosely by the tablespoons. Here are my quick hacks. When making ferments in salt brine, where we cover vegetables with a salt water, we can skip the weighing and calculation to simply make a 4% salt water solution. This is a higher ratio than the 2 to 2.5% because we have to factor in that the vegetables will need to absorb salt as well. The simple measurement of 2 tablespoons of salt in every 4 cups of water work for just about any vegetables. Let's take a closer look at the conversion. In every 4 cups of water, this is roughly how much salt you need to use to achieve the desired salt brine ratio. 1 tablespoon for 2% salt brine, 1.5 tablespoon for 3% salt brine, 2 tablespoon for 4% salt brine, and 2.5 tablespoon for 5% salt brine. Now is a good time to pause the video for a few seconds if you would like to take a screenshot. While making self-brining ferments where the vegetables release enough juice to cover themselves, we add salt directly into the vegetables instead of the water. My favorites are sauerkraut and fermented salsa. I use 1 tablespoon of salt for every 2 pounds of vegetables. And in rare cases, if your sauerkraut didn't release enough juice, you can top up with a 2% salt brine. That's 1 tablespoon of salt in every 4 cups of water. If you're experimenting with fermentation at home, the simple measurement I showed you above is what you need for pretty much any kind of vegetables. If you're reading other people's recipes, some may ask for ratios, some may use grams, some may use cups and tablespoons. So hopefully the explanation uh, here linked up everything and now it all makes sense to you. I have a collection of fermentation recipes on my blog, yangsnourishingkitchen.com. They're all free for you to use. I also run fermentation workshops in Markham, just north of Toronto. Uh, I'm going to leave links to my recipes and the workshop down below in the description. Get in touch with me and let me know what I can do to help you. Happy fermenting and see you next time.